Hello everyone, welcome to the PyCharm Fast API tutorial series. As you know, in our previous video, we completed the feature of placing the new order. But we wanted to make sure that once the order has been placed, then we need to send an email saying that your order has been successfully placed, and that's what we're going to cover in today's video. Before moving ahead, I expect from the audience that they have experience working with AWS. We'll be using Amazon SES, also known as Simple Email Service, along with Celery for task processing and Redis as an in-memory data store. You can even use fast API background tasks, but if you are performing some heavy computation, then you definitely need to use Celery. For sending email, the background tasks are good enough, but we intended to use Celery. Coming back to AWS, for our testing purpose, we need to verify an email, and after that, only will we be able to send it. Only verified email addresses can be sent under from and to. When you apply for a production use case, you don't need to focus on verifying email addresses, but Amazon has stringent controls of sending emails, like handling bounces and complaints and not spamming users. Amazon has a good reputation with the ISPs. If you don't follow that carefully, then you might end up losing reputation and indeed your service might get stopped. Please check the link below for information. Coming back, I'll be using a temporary email for verification where I'll be sending emails for testing, even if you can use your personal email accounts. I will go to this website, getnada.com, or you can also use Mailinator. I'll provide a random email address like fastapi at boximail.com. Let me try to verify this. Sometimes the verification links appear immediately, but it also gets delayed sometimes. As this is a temporary email, you might face issues in receiving. Great, we received an email from AWS and I will try to verify the link. Okay, our email has been successfully verified. We can go ahead and send emails to this address. Let's come back to our terminal where I'm going to install Redis. Let me check it's working fine by running the ping command. I got the reply, nice. Next, I need to install Celery. I will go to main.py where I will initialize Celery.
I will update the environment variables for Redis in the config. I need to update the broker to point towards the Redis instance. Backend will be where all the Celery results are stored. I forgot to install the Python Redis package. Let me quickly resolve it. Under celery.conf.imports, we need to add our task file. The task file will import a shared task from Celery, which is going to process the send under email function. I will open the terminal and type celery-a main.celery worker-i info dash dash pool equal prefork. The dash a, big A, stands for application. The dash i, big I, stands for log level. Dash dash pool is basically the execution pool. It supports different pools like prefork, solo, eventlet, and gevent. The prefork pool implementation is based on Python's multiprocessing. It allows your Celery worker to sidestep Python's global interpreter lock and fully leverage multiple processors. You can observe that Celery has now been listening to our register tasks send under email. I need to complete the implementation for order notification. Let me copy paste the business logic in the mail.py file. I've previously implemented this logic, so I don't want to type it again. It's already there in the source code. You can go and check in GitHub. Let me explain what I'm trying to do. I also need the Bodo3 library, which is basically the Python SDK for AWS. You can observe the code that contains a short snippet of HTML code, which is going to show the message of the order placed successfully. We have also defined the sender email, the one which we verified earlier, along with AWS region and subject name. The structure of sending the email from the Bodo3 client, I've taken this from their official documentation. Before moving ahead, make sure you have AWS CLI installed on your machine.
The CLI has been successfully installed. Let me now create the SMTP credentials, which is required for sending emails. I will update the access key ID and the secret access key. Let me now try to do a dry run by sending an email and checking whether I am receiving it or not. I will open the Python console and import the mail function. I will try to send the same verified email address. Looks like something is wrong with the access. Let me try to investigate. I will go to the IAM console and check users. I will provide full access for sending emails, but I don't recommend that. It's not a good practice, and this is a tutorial where we can ignore this case, but make sure when you are working on a live production use case, you should have stringent controls over your access. I will revoke this access key and create a new one. Let me retest once more. Yes, the email has been sent successfully. We have successfully received the email as well. I will restart Celery to pick up the new changes. Now I will try to place an order from the Swagger UI and expect that once the order has been placed that we will receive an email. Again, I'm going to purchase an iPhone 13 whose product ID is 1. One second, I need to do some code modification in my order function. I need to replace this line with our task. Delay is a shortcut to send a task message to the background.
Now I will come back and try to execute the order. As you can see, the celery has picked up the task and we got the response as email sent with the message ID. Let me check whether I've received any new email. And yes, we have received it. So I hope you got a basic understanding of how things are working behind the scenes. Even if you were more interested, then definitely check the celery documentation. You must now be able to clearly visualize the entire flow of adding products and then pushing to the cart and finally placing an order and getting the order confirmation over email. I will see you in the next video where we will be focusing on authentication and JWT.